Welcome to E3 2014, everybody. My name is Christopher Thomas Plant. I am joined today by my friend Arthur Geese. We are going to be talking about PC hardware. And Don't I bet go. Don't <laughs> stop. Stay, <laughs> because we actually have people who know what they're talking about. From Alienware, we have Frank Azar, the general manager, and we have Mark Diana, who is in business development. They're going to tell us about new hardware. They are going to enlighten me into what RAM actually does. They're going to show me where I plug the thing in so it turns on. It's going to be a hell of a show. So <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, and now I'm going, to, I'm going to hand it over to Arthur, because I'm already lost. So we're not going to talk about any of that. Uh, <laughs> So today you guys have brought to show us the Alienware Alpha, correct? Right. That's right. Um, the Alienware Alpha was announced back at CES as a Steam machine. And back in May, Valve announced that the Steam controller and the Steam OS would be released in 2015, as opposed to 2014 as was expected. But here we are, and you guys are still releasing the Alpha this fall. That's right. Uh, so explain how you came to the decision that you were gonna push ahead with this year, um, what you're sort of doing as a stopgap between when you're releasing and when Steam is ready for prime time. So it's pretty simple actually. Um, our vision has always been around developing this solution to take the hundreds of games that are already on Steam right. and that continue to multiply very rapidly. Um, and the ones that have full gamepad support of which is over 450 of today, and give you a solution to bring those to your living room. Um, if you want to do it today, uh, and a lot of us have done it, right? You try and get a laptop and plug it in, and then you got the power button, you got to open up the screen, and that's a pretty horrible solution. Um, or you put some desktop that you were able to kind of DIY yourself or something, and it's probably large, it's probably loud, it uh, probably puts out a ton of heat, it's got a hard drive light flashing in your face every time you load something, it's kind of annoying. Um, there hasn't really been a purpose-built device sure. to go deliver that content to your television set. And why do you want that content delivered to your television? Because there's a, just a ton of games that are a lot of fun, especially with the gamepad, especially with two, three, or four guys playing right. um, in front of the screen. And uh, uh, the ton of indie games especially that are just an absolute blast. And we see, I mean, you look at how many games Valve has launched just this year, or Steam has launched just this year alone, right? It's more than uh, they launched the entire year last year. So that's gonna to continue to occur. Um, Steam OS is still the ideal solution for us. Steam Gamepad is really cool. It's gonna help us bring some new genres over to the platform as well. Um, but when those platforms were, or when those two uh, items were delayed, um, the desire and the content um, is still there and there's still a desire to bring those games to the living room. Our box is ready to go. So um, our solution is we're gonna build you something or we are building you something that um, we'll bring those games to you. It'll bring them to you in a gamepad interface so you won't have to use a keyboard and mouse. We'll leverage Steam Big Picture Mode, which has been on the market for over a year. Works great, it's very mature, it's very reliable. And uh, we're doing things software-wise to the operating system and we're doing our own uh, UI as well to make it an experience that's fully navigable with the gamepad. Yeah. Uh, you know. Our, our, our goal when, when we created this product, and certainly with the changes that has happened, is that a user should take this out of your box. So Chris, you, you mentioned you know PC gaming. It's a bit intimidating, uh, uh, but there's a lot of titles that are super fun, like Frank said, on Steam. So our idea was, how can we make this a console? How can, what, is the, what is the one factor that would make this box a console? And really, that's being able to navigate everything that you need to get into with just the controller. And as you can see, I mean, we're shipping with an Xbox 360 wireless control. It's a controller that people out there really you know, have been using for a while. Uh, games are already programmed to that controller. So so once you fire up your alpha console, basically everything that you need to get into is done all through a custom UI that's exclusive to us. So um, we're basically using that to point to things like, you know, pair with my wireless network, um, access different components of, of the system or, and tune different settings. Um, but primarily we see it as a launch pad to get you into Steam Big Picture. Um, and we think that that's really where the majority of users are going to do most of their gaming anyways. So The other thing that's really neat about what we can do is we're actually combining the PC-centric keyboard and mouse world with the gamepad-centric console world. So at our booth uh, this week, we're actually showing um, Gauntlet, really cool, highly anticipated game where three people are playing with a gamepad and one person is playing with a keyboard and mouse. So you can finally you have a box that you can kind of uh, consolidate those two worlds, share the same screen, share the same box, share the same game, 
but you can use whatever control interface you prefer to use. And you see we're bundling the Xbox 360 gamepad. You can pretty much use, for the most part, any gamepad you want to use with our box. You can use any keyboard and mouse you want to use, any headset you want to use. It's very flexible. It's very open. We're not confining you to any licensed hardware or any particular um, uh, content or hardware or anything, really. I mean, it's kind of like the most flexible console ever made. Sure. Um, it is powered by Windows for now because SteamOS isn't ready yet. But uh, you won't see Windows if you don't want to see it. You'll just see a full console experience. Windows just allows us to bring you the entire library of DirectX games on this box. And if for whatever reason you also want to use it as a Windows PC, you can exit our console experience and you can use it as such a, as such a device. But um, you won't see that if you don't want to. So speaking about sort of Steam and Valve, Valve is a software company and Valve has been building big picture as a software company. Um, Alienware is a hardware company and you do it very well and you've done it for a long time. Um, obviously the challenge of creating software that turns a PC into a true living room device is a difficult job because Valve has pushed it back several times. So uh, how are you as a hardware company entering this space to try to make it to market this fall with something that bridges that gap in a way that is accessible for people who aren't the PC gamer, which I assume is like the market that you're really aiming yeah. for. Well, not exactly. I mean, again, our primary goal here is take the amazing content that's already on Steam that is best suited for keyboard, or sorry, best suited for gamepad and best suited in the living room and bringing that to your, to your living room, right. building you a box to do that. There's pretty big differences to answer your question around <clears throat> what Valve's trying to do and what we're going to be delivering this year. Valve's trying to build an operating system from A to Z centered around the console experience, and they're trying to build a gamepad to interact with that uh, operating system. Um, and it's really they're starting from a blank sheet of paper to do that. Now, they're not there anymore, but when they originally started, that's what they were starting at. Sure, they had Linux and everything that give them a foundation, but it's an incredible amount of work that they have to go off and do. We are not um, starting from a blank sheet of paper. We have a operating system that is well established and well defined and it's very it works very well we have game pads that have shipped in the tens if not hundreds of millions out there so those are two kind of um, new items or risk factors if you will that we're not dealing with the only risk factor we're dealing with or the only uh, development that we have to do aside from the hardware itself but from a software perspective is getting windows to operate in a console type of an experience sure. e valves even give, delivered us steam big picture mode so we don't even have to develop the Steam store for the console experience. That's already done for us. It's just taking Windows and um, purposely modifying it for the environment that it's going to be in. And it's not to say that that's going to be easy. It's not easy. We, we, we know exactly what's involved in doing it. But it's a, it's a much simpler scope of work than trying to build everything from the ground up. Yeah, and I think the, the, the task at hand and in, in, in the end user is a user who doesn't want their Steam experience to end just because they've gotten up where their their desktop or their notebook is, and just because they've moved into another room, it shouldn't end. Um, so all your friends, all your titles, all that stuff inherently work natively on this box now uh, because it is DirectX based. Now, I, I moved my massive, gross machine like right next to my television because I yeah. was like, I'm going to play games on TV. I'm not playing them because they're sitting upstairs in a monitor and that's where I work and I don't want to be there all day. But what I ended up finding out was it was better than any other console I've had at doing the media thing that every console has tried to do. My, my wife doesn't know how to get around the Xbox menu, as simple as that sounds. Yeah. It's just it's foreign to her, yeah. but she uses a computer all day, so she knows how to find Amazon.com or go to Netflix or YouTube and watch things on her TV. Is this a system that is focused on games, or are there outlets towards media or is that something you think about is it important just to have a singular focus i'll, I'll take this so so at comic-con this year so we're going to be there we're going to be showing users our our full end experience i promise you it's it's very easy to navigate so uh, again the the ui was purpose built around the control so it's um we're showing it off today uh, behind closed doors just to show people like hey 
We are not you know, joking when we say we can do all these features with the controller, and in fact, here it is. Um, but we're going to peel back the, the curtain on that uh, for Comic-Con so users will be able to come up, see the UI for themselves. It's going to be very easy to point to all kinds of things like that. But you know, one of the pillars of this, uh, of this program and of, of this alpha experience for us is, is being open, right? So we're, we're talking about, hey, having users uh, have the ability to customize that skin uh, and customize that experience of the alpha UI. UI. So all those features are going to be features that we're going to constantly work to improve and update. And I think that what you're going to find is it's, it's going to be an experience that it's, again, 100% turnkey out of the box that lets you get around everything you need to with just the controller. Let me uh, I'll build a little bit on what Mark said and um, maybe to answer your, your question a little bit more specifically. Initially, when we launch Alpha, it'll be, most, it'll be almost exclusively focused on gaming and game content um, and Steam Big Picture. Uh, I think um, as... The, uh, the popularity of the product grows, and as the support in the market grows, um, we're going to start seeing folks developing app or wanting to develop applications for the UI and for the box, so it'll be navigable with the gamepad. You know, we'd love to have content partners like Netflix and other folks um, that do that. Uh, right now, they're not signed up. So initially, when you buy this box, it'll be mostly centered around gaming, and you know, we'll have some type of maybe uh, music and video playback for locally stored content or some of the content stored in your network. Um, but it's going to be focused on gaming. Um, in terms of kind of uh, connectivity with the rest of your living room, we put an HDMI import on the box as well. So um, if you do have an Xbox One or uh, an Xbox 360 or another device that is more of like your all-in-one kind of entertainment device, you can port that into this box and just really quickly switch the input um, with using the gamepad and using RUI instead of having to uh, pick up a remote control so you kind of have quick access if you want to connect any other solution of uh, amazon fire tv a roku box something like that so that was one of the things that um you know we uh, we're building a gaming console we're not trying to build an all-in-one entertainment device that right. some of these other companies have kind of evolved into um, so what we did is we thought about that functionality so you could port in kind of any other uh, entertainment device that you've already invested in so to talk about the hardware for a minute uh it uses Desktop parts, for the most part, it, it has a, a micro ITX motherboard, it looks it's like. It's proprietary, actually. It's a uh, custom form it's factor. It's very, very tiny. Yeah. Uh, it has a desktop PC processor. It and does. The $550 model uses an i3, correct? Correct. correct yeah. uh, and it's got a custom NVIDIA chipset that sounds like it's based on the mobile uh, space. Is that accurate? So the, the, the chipset, um, or the, the graphics processing unit that's in the machine, it, it is a custom-based solution that, that we did work with NVIDIA on. Um, and it is, it is based on uh, that class of part in the sense that it's, it's on the board, it's soldered on, so users can't upgrade it. They'll be able to upgrade the microprocessor, they'll be able to upgrade the memory and the hard disk drive, but the GPU is really the heart uh, of the system, and it's, it's a... It's based on Maxwell, which right now is the best uh, performance per watt story that's out there. So as you can see, form factor is super small, right? It's a little bit larger than a than a original Wii, and we're able to get into a form factor that's that small, use l low power, and not generate a lot of heat by having that Maxwell-based solution in there. So um, we think that you know it's definitely the perfect solution that lets users experience like a ton of their content that's out there on on PCs, all at frame rates that are true 1080p, uh, that are you know gaming class frame rates, right? So above 40, above 45 frames a second with s some settings really turned up. So um, the, the, the system for sure is, is able to, to hit a new, a new class of gameplay in a size like that. So uh, there's other consoles that are probably in your living room. There's, there's one up there, and it's quite small compared to that as well. Right. So um, A lot of my friends who like come over to my house and are casual gaming people. I've seen Steam, who, yeah. these are people who didn't know what Steam was, mm -hmm. and they see the prices and they're shocked and they're like, how do I get into this? Yeah. And then they're obviously intimidated and this seems like the kind of product that would be perfect for them. How do you get in front of these people who you know aren't maybe even reading a site like ours, who, who don't know like PC gaming still exists? Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> our target is, First and foremost, to, to take folks that are already playing games on Steam and giving them a platform to be able to ex extend their already existing library of games or um, extend kind of the environment that they're already used to purchasing their games and their network of playing with friends and community and everything. That's first and foremost. And I think um, we, we believe that 
it starts there. They will go off and uh, they'll propagate if they have a great experience with this product to their friends and family that they should also uh, make the investment in this solution because they want, I mean, what fun is playing a game? Well, it is fun to play by yourself, but we've seen multiplayer gaming is a lot of fun as well, right? You look at the amount of hours spent in a single player session of Call of Duty versus in the multiplayer, <laughs> multiplayer sessions and they're, they're not even comparable. So we think it starts there with our core customer, with the, the core Steam customer, um, delivering a great solution to them that is enjoyable and you can have a lot of fun and it's new fun. It's fun that you just can't have on a 22 inch monitor with four game pads wrapped around it. I mean, that's just not a great experience. Um, and then we think it, uh, that uh, they'll be the, uh, really the ones that sell the product for us and really be the viral effect that this, uh, this product deserves. Bro force on the sofa. Four bros, four <laughs> that's controllers, that's, done. That's, that's the selling line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 <laughs> Bro Force is a blast. Gauntlet is Gauntlet. a great game. Yeah. Right? It's a, it's a really cool franchise, really great game. I used to play that 20 years ago, dating myself. But um, how are you going to play Gauntlet on a 22-inch monitor? Right. You know, with four, with four friends. It's not a great experience. So that, look at a game like that, Bro Force, Night Squad. I mean, these are games that um, some of you may have heard of, some of you may have not. But when you play it, you're like, Damn, this is a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun right now. And uh, it just it, it takes off from there. And then you discover the rest of the games that are out there on Steam. And, you know, they're like priced between five bucks and 30 bucks. There's yeah. over a thousand games that are less than $10 on Steam. So you can have an absolute blast for a fraction of the cost as uh, what you may be paying for today on, a, on another console. You don't have to have any subscription costs, right? You're not paying for a, you're not paying for a, um, a PSN or an Xbox Live connection with. Um, with Steam, so that's pretty cool as well. And then you've got your entire back catalog of games. So if you do want to break out a keyboard and mouse to play something um, that you may have invested in 10 years ago on Steam, you've got the option to do that now. Yeah. That's great. Um, I want to talk about the actual look of the console too, because uh, again, my, my monstrosity <laughs> that rests along things and people are like, well, why did you put a monolith next to your TV? What sort of religion do you obey? <laughs> uh, it, compared to uh, our boss, Chris Grant, who takes pride in the economy of the devices in his house and I think found something that is maybe the size of a small rock yeah. uh, that he's wedged a computer into. Yeah. Uh, how, how much thought goes into this design and making it look like something that is going to sit next to your television? Oh man, <laughs> a, a lot. Uh, it, takes, it takes a long time to build a product like this and that's Again, that's one of the advantages that we're able to provide to our, to our customers is there's a lot of R&D, there's a lot of time. Actually, we spend a lot of time talking with Valve um, about, hey, what size should it be? What, what sort of performance levels uh, sh should we be looking at? Uh, what kind of power draw? What kind of input? Um, so uh, that's one of the benefits of, of having the relationship with Valve. But this box uh, probably takes... Uh, takes quite some time, like what, oh, well over a year. It took, uh, took two years yeah. to get to this point. So there's a lot of work, a lot of effort. I mean, we are, we, we, we didn't just go off and get off the shelf components, yeah. obviously, right? So it's a collaboration with Intel, collaboration with NVIDIA, making the right decision as to which technology partner we're going to be collaborating with and which architecture to go with. How do you pick the right configurations? Like how did we know the Core i3 Haswell that we're using is gonna be fast enough for games? doing all the benchmarking you need to do and looking at all the different uh, NVIDIA pieces of silicon that are out there, finding the right one, discovering that there isn't necessarily the right one. You kind of kind of have to do some unique work in order to find the right solution. Um, and to Mark's point around form factor, how, how do we deliver a form factor that's amazing? How does this box perform as well, if not better than the current consoles, but it's a fraction of the size? And how do you deliver on that? I mean, it's, it's a lot of questions, a lot of work, a lot of challenges. Um, and uh, think about everything from industrial design. How, does, how do you want the box to look? How do we make it look so that it's obviously an Alienware product when you see it, um, but at the same time, it's, it's not something that's gonna shock people in the living room right. and that your wife or your girlfriend's not gonna let you put it under the TV because it flashes crazy lights like some of our other products do. A lot of consideration. I mean, there's just so much work and so much uh, effort that goes into it. But the end result is this amazing product over here. I, I mean, look at the size. It's just amazing. It looks like um, it, it's not a huge, it's not an amazing performer, but it actually is. When people see the games like Dying Light and Evolve running on this, they just can't believe the graphics horsepower that this thing is, uh, is delivering. Yeah. Um, and you get a box that's really quiet. Uh, you, can, you will barely be able to hear this thing, even when it's under full load. Uh, it's extremely thermally efficient, and that's a 
thanks a lot to the, uh, the silicon architecture that we chose here between Intel and, and NVIDIA. Um, and uh, it's upgradable for the most part as well. That's really am amazing. You can't really do that. I mean, so there's like so many different decisions, so much work that goes into it. You say two years, that seems like a really long time, but you know, the, the end result of that time is what we're delivering. It's a really high quality, really amazing product. And we also have a great relationship with um, a lot of game developers out there. So what we do is we'll seed them these units, we'll, we'll give them our spec, and we'll be like, hey, throw everything you got at this thing. Tell us like what we need to adjust. And we take that feedback super seriously. So um, when we get it, we, we go off and we make the changes that we need to make to ensure that, hey, when, when it finally gets into our customer's hands and when it gets into their living room, that it's gonna run the games that they wanna play at you know, very impressive frame rates. Fantastic. Oh, so to wrap up, uh, when can people expect to see this and about how much is it gonna cost them? So $549 will um, be the entry configuration. It will come bundled with a gamepad. Um, if you want to get a richer config because you want either a quad-core processor or you want more of a hard drive capacity, um, we will have other configurations available as well. So you'll be able to get up to a Core i7 quad-core, up to two terabytes of hard drive space, up to eight gigs of memory. All of the units will come with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi built in. Um, and they'll be, we'll begin delivering before the end of the year. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks yeah, thank a lot for having us. Great talking. Yeah. I understood about half the things you said, especially <laughs> the things about the memory. Um, and thank you for joining us. We are here all week. Uh, you can find more of our stuff on polygon.com or more of our videos on youtube.com forward slash polygon. But don't go there. Go to polygon.com because it rules. Bye. <laughs>